You have to look very closely because we are looking at Tom Lundberg's work. He is one of three artists represented here at the Textile Center for the summer of Stitch, Stitch, Stitch. Three stitches. Although there's a lot more in this room. I'm joined by Tracy Crum. And what, what's the idea of this, this summer event happening? Well, the idea was to bring three artists who work very differently in the stitching process together to exhibit their work so that there'd be a whole lot of different processes to look at and the, there'd be a really, really high level of um, creative practice in the textile arts using the most fundamental process, I think, in the field of textiles and fiber. If you don't know where to go with all that inspiration, why not bring it to the Dye Lab here at the Textile Center, where many classes are going on this summer, including Shishiko, you say there. Shishiko started as Japanese mending. So it's different than Japanese embroidery, and it's part of, now in the United States, the slow stitch movement. And it was a, one of the ways it was used in Japan was for their firefighters' uniforms because Japanese houses are made out of bamboo and paper. They just let them burn, and they didn't want the firefighter, so they just stitched layers of fabric together and wetted them down when they went in. So now it's used for ornamentation, and you can buy fabric with it printed on, and then you stitch it. Also at the textile center here, we offer kits where you can make little coasters and things like that, and then you can stitch it with colored threads, and it's just simply a basting stitch that you do in patterns with different threads, and then you can use for wall hangings, for pillows, for placemats. But it all starts with a very basic stitch. stitch. Just an in and out basting stitch. From sashiko to shibori, another Japanese technique. Right, and it's Japanese surface design, so this is called clamping. So you fold the fabric and you clamp it, and one of the things you can use is just ordinary clothespins. And then you squirt it with dye, and then after it, it sits in the dye for a while, you take off the clamps, and it leaves marks. And here's the finished piece. Wow, that is super cool. We're bringing Tracy back to talk about this last class, which is pretty much what it sounds like, eco printing. So I see the eco part. How does the printing happen? Well, what happens is we take the silk out of a chemical bath and lay it out and when the plant material is put on it, it's then rolled up and it's steamed and there's a chemical reaction that happens between the, the plants, whatever's in the plants, the chlorophyll, the tannic acids, and the chemistry that's in the water bath. And the end product is something along the lines of these fabrics, which are gorgeous. This looks like a high quality professional item. You're saying people can leave from class with something that looks like they, this? Pe they do. They leave from class usually with a scarf or some other yardage of, of fabric. Um, generally we're using silk which m gives it sort of this extra exquisite look to it um, and it also receives the dyes really really well from the plant materials. Well if you want to get your stitch on this summer remember there are some 50 classes for adults like this with folks like Sandra and others, plus 25 classes for kids aged 6 through 16, something for everyone.